and welcome to my tutorials on Euclid's Elements, Book 8. In this video presentation, we are going to be discussing Proposition 4 of Book 8. And in this proposition, we have three sets of ratios. We have a ratio of A to B, we have a ratio of C to D, we have a ratio of E to F. They are not necessarily equal to each other, and they are all the least ratios. So A to B is the least of A to B, and C to D is the least of C to D, and E of F is the least of E. So we start with these three separate ratios, and our goal is to find the least numbers A, G, K, and L such that A and B is equal to H to G, and then G and K is equal to C and D, and K and L is equal to E and F. Now, please note that these are not continuous proportions, like H to G is not equal to G to K. So, three separate ratios, and we're trying to find four numbers that can represent these three ratios. So, um, we're starting off that um, our three ratios are the least of their independent ratios. And we are going to start by constructing a number g such that it is the lowest common multiple of b and c. And then we're going to construct a number h such that it is the same multiple of b. Well, b, oh, hard to say this in English. But if um, b, if g is n times b, then h is n times a. I don't know how to say it in non-mathematical terms. So it's the same multiple. We're going to construct a number k, so that it is the same multiple of d into k as it is c into g. And now at this point, we are going to assume that E already measures K. Um, we're going to go through all the proofs and then we're going to backtrack to this point and then do another proof where E does not measure K. So for this particular example we're assuming that E measures K. And we're going to make the letter L, sorry, the number L, such that it's the same multiple of E is to K as F is to F. And thus we have that A to B is equal to H to G, G to K is C to D, and K to L is E to F. So we have constructed H, G, K, and L to be our four numbers that can represent these three ratios. So let's carry on to, this is the construction, let's carry on to the proof. Oh, by the way, um, we're also stating that H, G, K, and L are also the least numbers with the above ratios. And now we'll carry on to the proof. Sorry about that. So remember, this proof is assuming that E measures K. This is what we have constructed, so there's nothing new here. It's just all our um, construction written out. And now A measures H the same way that B measures G. So A to B is equal to H to G. Likewise, C to D is equal to G to K because they're the same multiple. We have that um, K and L are the same multiples of E to F, so the ratio of E to F is equal to the ratio of K to F. So Again, assuming that E measures K, we have found these four um, numbers and they satisfy what we were looking for, which is this relationship here in the ratios. But we also need to prove that they are the least numbers for those ratios. So we're going to do this by um, contradiction. So again, um, there's nothing new here. It's just a restatement of what we've proven already. And so what we're going to do is we're going to assume 
that there are numbers, N-O-M-P, that are less than H-G-K-L, and where the relationships hold that A to B is N to O, C to D is O to M, and E to F is M to P. And because this is a proof by contradiction, um, we will eventually come up with a logical inconsistency. Now, if A to B are the least numbers, and they're equal to N to O, then B measures O, and that's by Proposition 20 of Book 7. Likewise, since C and D are the least ratios, then C measures O. So we have O is also measured by C. So O is measured by B and C, and according to Proposition 35, if B and C both measure O, then so will the least common multiple of B and C. So the least common multiple of B and C will also measure O, and that's by Proposition 35 of Book 7. So the least common multiple of B and C has the value of G, so we have that O is measured by G. But we have said that O was smaller than G, so if it's smaller than G, it cannot be measured by G. And hence, there is our logical inconsistency, and this statement is not true. So there are no numbers in NOMP that are less than H, G, K, and L. So we have shown that H, G, K, and L are also the least in these ratios. So again, remember we were proving this when we were assuming that E measures K. So we have to backtrack a little bit and start working with the proof when E does not measure K. So that's coming next. So this is where we left off before. So we have that K, we have that, sorry, that um, G is a multiple of B and C. And um, H is a multiple of A, the same number of times that B is of G, and K is a multiple of D, the same number of times that C is of G. So that's where we left off. And now we're not assuming that E measures K. So we have to continue, and we come up with a number M, such that it's the least common multiple of E and K. So E and K both measure M. And we define a number n such, it, such that it's the same multiple of h as k is to m. And likewise, we come up with a number o, which is the same number of times that k, k multiplies m. And we come up with a number p, which is the same multiple that a is to m, so that f is to p. So there's a lot more um, manipulations going on here. And now we have N, O, M, and P, such that N, O is equal to the first ratio, O, M is e equal to the second ratio, and M, P is equal to the third ratio, and that N, M, O, P are the least of the above, of the above ratios. So again, we need to prove this, so let's carry on. So again, this proof is assuming that E did not, does not measure K. We're not doing anything here that we haven't already done. Um, again, we're just restating our construction. So since H is measured, measures N the same number of time that G measures O, H to G is equal to N to O. Likewise, we have that A to B, which is right here, A to B, is equal to H to G, and H to G is equal to N to O, so A to B is equal to N O. Now we're looking at G to K, is equal to O M. G K equals O M. 
and C to D is equal to G to K, G to K is equal to O to M, so we end up with C to D is equal to O M. And we have E to F equals M to P. And so now we've proved the ratios that N to O is the first ratio, O to M is the second ratio, and M to P is the third ratio. So we've proven that N, O, M, P, these four numbers can be used to express these three ratios. And now we have to prove that they are indeed the least numbers that can represent those ratios. And this gets, it's, it's all the same logic that we've used before, and there's a lot going on, so bear with me, this takes a little bit of time. So again, we're going to prove this by assuming that it's not true, so proving by contradiction. We are going to assume that there are numbers Q, R, S, and T, that are less than NOMP and satisfy the ratio conditions. So since A and B are the least ratios, then um, R will, measure, will be measured by B. So B measures R. And likewise, C and D are the least ratios, so C measures R. And if there are two numbers that measure R, then the least common multiple of those two numbers will also measure R. And the least common multiple of B and C is equal to G. So all of this to get to that G measures R. Now G is to K as C is to D. So G is to K as C is to D. And if we look at g is to k is equal to c is to d, we also have that g is to k is equal to r to s. And we're doing alternate ratios. So g to k is equal to r s. So g to r is equal to k to s. So that's the alternative ratios. Um, it's Proposition 13 of Book 7. So I didn't write down all the steps here, but this is what is going on. So we have that G to R is equal to K to S. Now R is a multiple of G. So if R is a multiple of G, then S is a multiple of K. So S is a multiple of K. Now E to F is equal to S to T. E and F are um, prime to each other. So E measures S. So if E and K measure S, then the least common multiple of E and K also measure S. But the least common multiple of E and K is M, so we have that M measures S. And finally we get to the contradiction. M measures S, but here we stated that S is less than M. And since this is a logical inconsistency, both of these statements cannot both be true. The original statement that S is less than M is false. So there are no numbers Q, R, S, and T less than N, O, M, P that hold the relationships between the appropriate ratios. So this is not true, which leads us to N, O, M, P are the least ratios such that N and O equals A and B, O and M equals C and D, and M and P equals E. And that concludes our proof. Because the above was kind of confusing, I wanted to give a concrete example. And I was thinking in terms of when you're going out to get um, fertilizer for your gardens, they often give you three numbers in a row that show the relative ratios. But I decided to use spices as an example. And now I am not a cook, 
So I simply made these numbers up. Please don't use this in your cooking because I don't know what I'm talking about. But let's assume that the perfect salt to pepper ratio is two to three. And the perfect ratio of pepper to garlic is two to five. And the perfect ratio of garlic to oregano is three to seven. But we want to make a melange of salt, pepper, garlic, and oregano. So we want to figure out what ratios we should use of all these four spices. So by using the calculations in this construction, and I'm not going to go over the details, but I've worked out all the numbers, and I've come to a ratio of 4, 6, 15, and 35. So if I put in 4 grams of salt, I can put in 6 grams of pepper, 15 grams of garlic, and 35 grams of oregano, mix it all up, and it would be the perfect spice blend. So it's not something we normally use in our day-to-day -day life in terms of these kind of ratios, but I do know that it's used for fertilizers when you are buying them for your garden. So that's how they can calculate these numbers. So that's it for my example. And please remember, I am not a cook. Do not use these, this spice blend and expect anything good. So that's it for this proposition.